Thanks, Dave. A core part of your experience with mobile devices is the mobile web. Just to get a sense of the growth that we've been seeing, at the beginning of last year, we had 27 million monthly active users of Chrome on mobile. Today, we have more than 300 million. That's 10x growth. Yeah, it's awesome. It's 10x growth in just the last year alone. And what that means for us is that we need to make the mobile web work well for our developers and our users. Today, I'm going to talk about three ways we're going to do that. We're enabling material design experiences on the mobile web. We're redesigning recents to help you multitask. And we're extending our capabilities of app indexing to help people get to where they want to go faster. So first, let's talk about material design. One of the big parts of your experience with the mobile web is, well, obviously, the websites themselves. They need to work well. They need to look great. They need to be fun to use. You heard Matthias earlier talking about the philosophy of material design, a bold, consistent, intuitive experience that just works across screens. Well, we've been working really hard at making those experiences not just possible, but the new standard for the mobile web. To show you what this looks like, my good friend Tom here uh, is going to walk us through an exploration of Google.com search results on the mobile web re-envisioned with material design. So Tom, let's go ahead and do that search for a starry night. Now, the first thing that you see here is that this panel is rendered as a beautiful material style card. You notice the use of color. The title is on a blue background that was actually programmatically matched to the painting. And if Tom clicks on uh, to expand the card, you'll notice that it filled the screen with a continuous animation. If he scrolls, the header will shrink. It won't pop into place, but it has a, a smooth animation that just makes sense. Now, let's go ahead and click on the suggestion at the bottom to get more of Van Gogh's artwork. And you'll see those search results also smoothly animated into place. Tom's going to continue to give us some uh, demo eye candy over here. And while this is just an exploration that you're seeing, I want to mention that this is fast, fluid, continuous animation at 60 frames per second. This, just, this thing was, just wasn't possible a year ago. We've been working really hard at improving the performance and predictability of the platform to make things like this possible. For example, this demo shows off the work that we've done on touch latency, giving you as a developer notice of touch events earlier in the frame so you have more time to act. And as Matthias mentioned earlier, with Polymer, our UI toolkit for the web, all of you can build web experiences that feel as awesome as this. The next big area we've been thinking about is how to help you multitask. And we think the recent feature in Android is one way we can actually make this easier, especially as tasks cross both the web and apps, as they often do. So once again, Tom is going to walk us through the changes here. So Tom, let's go ahead and click on that recents icon in the lower right. Now, as Tom scrolls through, the first thing that you'll notice is Recents has also been grounded in material design. You'll notice the overlapping cards have been rendered with realistic shadows and perspective. But there's another thing going on here that may not be immediately apparent. Chrome, Tom's Chrome tabs are also listed here as well. He's been researching restaurants to go in SF, so he has articles from the New York Times and the SF Chronicle. Here's individual items. You'll notice the, the site icons or the fav icons there. As he scrolls back a bit further, You'll notice he's been researching in the Urban Spoon app. He has the Docs app open where he's been collaborating with some friends. So let's go ahead and click on that doc and see what your friends have to say. I've heard great things about state bird provisions. Let's, let's check out that article here. Now what you see here as this loads is this is actually loading as a website in Chrome. You'll notice the URL up at the top. Now, if Tom pops it back into Recents, that page is now listed there, along with all of his other open stuff. I want to point out what the big difference is here. This is a view you couldn't get before today. If you wanted to get to all your open websites, you'd have to go into Chrome and kind of flip through them there. But by bringing all of your individual Chrome tabs here and listing them in your Recents view, we're making it really easy for you to move between the web and apps, making multitasking just that much easier. And let yeah. <laughs> And last but not least, this change to Chrome is actually built on top of a new API in L that allows apps to populate multiple items in Recents. So for all you app developers, as this kind of thing makes sense for you, you can make use of it as well. Going 
a step further, we're also making it easy for you to find content using Google Search, whether it's deep in the web or deep in an app. So last fall, we announced app indexing. As a developer, this capability lets you get to app content, lets you get your users to app content directly from the search results page. Since then, we've been working on a ton of UI improvements and, and extending some APIs to make this more powerful. But let me just give you a quick refresher of what this capability enables. So let's go ahead and do a search for water bar restaurants. I've heard good things about it over by the Embarcadero. As Tom scrolls through the search results, you'll see close to the top there's a link for the home page to water bar. And near the bottom of the screen, there's a, oh, actually in the middle of the screen, there's a result for open table. Now what's different about this UI is this link to OpenTable, instead of going to the website, is actually gonna take us to the OpenTable app because Tom happens, happens to have the app installed. So let's go ahead and click on that link. And you'll see it takes us directly to WaterBar within the OpenTable app. <laughs> up until now, this was only available to a few applications, but today we're opening it up to all Android app developers globally along with some tools to get you started. Yeah. And going further, if your site requires, sorry, if your app requires you to, your users to sign in, you'll, use, you'll be able to use Google Plus Sign In in the coming months to have your public content show up in search as well. You know, we thought this would be even better if we could help your users rediscover content that they've already found in your apps. So we're adding a new API in Google Play Services to do just that. So let's quickly show you how this works. Tom found this really cool 3D tour of the Ferry Building earlier, and he wants to get back to it. So starting with the search box on his home screen, he's going to do a search for Ferry Building. And what you'll notice at the bottom of the screen is there's a search suggestion for Ferry Building Marketplace in the Google Earth app. And this is there because he, this was the app that he was using when he found that tour before, even if he himself didn't remember. With a single click, he'll get taken directly to the tour of the Ferry Building within the Google Earth app. Now this is possible because the app is making its content available based on its users' previous actions. We just showed you this with Google Earth, but any app that utilizes this new API will have the same capability. For developers, we think this is a great way for, for you to help your users rediscover content right when they're looking for it. And with that, I'll hand it back to Dave, who's gonna take you through some more of the enhancements you can look forward to in ELF.